I had a ridiculously unnecessarily so difficult week with people who I would normally call colleagues but um, I'm not interested in remaining so so they're just people who were pissing me off <laughs> that's essentially where we were where we are so um, it started off with uh, my first staff meeting with the school called planning day and um, went into uh, being called down to principal's office by someone who, who who he did not disclose but I think it's one of my co-teachers because um, I have two co-teachers and one was not present <laughs> but apparently uh, they were concerned about me having fear of being in a classroom alone or something like that um, there are a couple things he said that I was like those are nothing that I've ever said or any complaints that I've ever given you and um, so um, when I asked him who initiated this meeting, he said, oh, I did. And he literally has not followed up with me about how I'm coping with this position since the first week when I approached him twice <laughs> to tell him uh, or ask him questions, follow up questions about the role and so forth. Right. So this is week four. This was week four. And suddenly I'm called to the principal office and he's like, oh, I initiated this because you, you, one of my other co-teachers co are there. Um, you both have talked to me separately. So it turned out that the other co-teacher that was there in the room with me did not ask for that meeting. So it only leaves the third co-teacher who was not in the meeting um, to have made some complaints that were not actually vocalized. But yet I feel as if I was being reprimanded for something I know not about, which um, is bullshit um, and does not uh, lend itself to any type of trusting relationship with the principal. Um, and this is not <laughs> like every interaction that I've had with him has come off stinky. Um, so, yeah, I'm not I'm not feeling it at all. So um, there's that. Um, but the reason I wanted to share is that uh, the why, like, why are you doing anything or why are you doing what you're doing? So that's some oh, that's a question I've been asking students who show up and don't do any work. I'm like, well, why? Why come if you're, every day you're going to sit here and just stare at the, your desk, put your head down or stare at the wall or just stare at me when I talk to you directly with no words because you don't care. Apparently, why show up, you know, and um after having a conversation with the principal, three mentors in the building, um, one was a district mentor, another was like a project mentor, I have no idea, and the other was uh, the building mentor, floor mentor uh, for me. Um, all of those people were useless to my sense of peace and well-being within this role. Um, they actually... Uh, caused a great deal of anxiety and frustration and anger um, that was not and is not necessary um, by their handling of something that they were responding to something that I still don't know what they're responding to but they are aggressively trying to overcorrect me for something I know not what they're trying to correct right I, I can guess what they're trying to correct but in the absence of their um, transparency <laughs> and their truthfulness I'm not going to assist in whatever they're trying to do and I've made that clear too. So we're all just pissed off now. <laughs> and this is how I roll. <laughs> you gonna piss me off, I'm gonna give it back to you exactly and more so powerfully as you gave it to me. So, um, one thing I told the district mentor that probably kicked off part of this series, um, he, was, he was in the building on Tuesday to give me feedback from an ob observation that he had with me on Friday and up to that point I would have thought that he was an ally like I felt comfortable with him I was able to give him you know my observations um, what I was struggling with what I you know what I thought I needed help with um, what um, things that were popping out to me with the situation with the co-teachers um, and ask follow-up questions um, how do I get these tools how do I get these resources where do I go for XYZ I still can't do one two three you know and he was answering those questions and he was getting responses for me so I thought that we were build, building a rapport um, but then when I was pulled into uh, the meeting with him and the building mentor who had been incognito persona like just uh, just out of pocket like I, this was my second time second or third time talking to her 
the second time being when she pulled me out of class to tell me about this meeting and the first time when she pulled me out of class to introduce me to the district manager so literally no uh one-on-one -on -one communications about anything so i don't necessarily know her i just had a, two conversations or introductions with her through her and so um he the the district manager whom i thought i was building rapport with actually just set through and let this woman railroad through whatever she was railroading through that was not a concern to me <laughs> it was not something i was complaining about was not something that i was interested in was not something that needed to pull me out of class or get me into the building early in order to hear her ramble on about something that i wasn't buying into at that point um so um one thing that's been that I've been asking myself is, you know, they 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 are trying to hammer me, basically, or hammer an issue that could have just been, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, email. Basically, it could have been a simple email, um, and they've turned into something where it's a battle of wills, and they think that they are on top because they think that for whatever reason. Um, in their minds, they are my superiors, okay? And they think for whatever reason they are my superiors that they have this power over my life and my will and my livelihood. And I'm here to tell you that they don't. <laughs> like no one has that power. Like literally no one has that power to, to control me in a way that um, I don't want to be controlled. And if I do not have a liking for you, you are getting absolutely shit for me. Nothing, nada, not I mean, like I wouldn't even shit on you because that's giving you something that's regurgitating something from my body. You're not even getting the nutrients from my body. Forget about it. You're getting nothing. So, so I have nothing but air between us. <laughs> that's it. And I can't give you the air. So get still nothing for me. Okay. Um, so yeah, the way they went about this has completely alienated me and they have no understanding of that. Um, and again, it all boils down to the lack of truthfulness, the lack of transparency, and obviously taking a side for a person who is not woman enough or person enough to stand up for her own frustrations. So whatever issue the non-present co-teacher has with me, rather than speaking it to me directly, she's, <laughs> she's enlisted the aid of all these other authority figures within the school system um, to come to... Uh, to basically bend me to her will. And if you think I'm going to bend to the will of someone who's supposed to be my aide in my classroom, you can completely go fuck yourself. <laughs> like, <laughs> you are not going to get me to undermine my own position and my own authority based on some unheard complaints from a woman who can't stand firm on her own word. No, you got me fucked up. So this is where we are. So what is my why? Right now, my why for anything is to finish the house that I'm renovating. That's it. That's all. So if I am in, if I'm taking any jobs, if I'm taking any of these menial labor jobs where they don't want to pay well, they have no benefits, um, it's quick pay, it's quick in and out, or it's, uh, um, it's flexible, right? I'm subbing. It's flexible to me. Um, I'm doing it so I can literally finish my why. My why is to finish my my, my house. So, and beyond that is, you know, I, I know what my future goals are. No one else needs to know that. So if you are impeding me, like I have not slept through the night in uh, four weeks, literally since I started this job, I have not slept all the way through one night. I'm waking up at two o'clock, three o'clock, two thirty, four o'clock. Can't get back to sleep for one hour, two hours, three hours. And now it's to the point where I'm getting back to sleep at five. I need to wake up at five thirty or six o'clock and I'm sleeping through my alarm and I'm just dragging myself to, to, to work. And I know that feeling. That's the feeling I left. <laughs> New York City and the feeling where I didn't want to face the people I had to deal with all day long and what so so if I didn't want if I literally left a whole career sold a whole condo and <laughs> moved across the country from a high-paying corporate job to get rid of this bullshit what makes you think I'm gonna do it for less than a third of what I was getting paid there you haven't even paid attention to my resume talking about, oh, we, we love what you bring to the table. You're not paying attention. Uh, I mean, like, if you if you love my resume so much, well, why haven't you asked me, oh, well, why did you leave New York? Um, because I'm happy to tell people for a slower pace, for peace and tra tranquility. 
So I'm not bothered by the BS of corporate America. So if I left for that, what makes you think that I want to become a cog um, for pennies on a dollar? So yeah, what's your why? And once you know your why, you won't be able to get jerked around the way that people jerk people around. Um, <laughs> you won't you won't put yourself through stuff unnecessarily. So before people start asking, um, I'm not putting myself through anything unnecessarily. I'm biding my time until something else uh, works out for me. And it will be what it will be. But, um, you know, <laughs> one thing I was sharing with someone was... Uh, I was so excited and there's a video I've already posted <laughs> I was so excited when I got this position because I was like oh my gosh this is in line with what I want to do this is in line with um, you know basically teaching abroad and teaching and living abroad or living abroad is my end goal is living overseas I'm not sure which country or countries because I, I'm sure I'm gonna travel through a couple of countries before I settle down um, but one way I realize or think or believe or want to um, provide for myself while I'm transient is by sub by teaching by teaching so here is substitute teaching overseas it would be I'd probably be teaching English as the second language that's my goal and so my why here also is not just to uh, not just to um, finish the house, although the house is a huge part of that because I'm not free to travel until I'm done with the house, right? Um, but the added incentive for subbing in the school environment is that it's experience for the ESL license, right? So if I have classroom experience for a year or two, then my trusty friend overseas who's doing ESL in Spain has told me that that's pretty much gold anywhere in Europe where I might want to teach ESL. So that's the added why, right? But that, <laughs> that in itself is not enough to keep me in a position that's stressing me out. I can just say fuck it all and just walk out um, pretty much on, on, a, on one wrong, wrong comment at this point because I'm over it all. But um, so yeah, so, so the ESL license is not the why and that's its incentive um, for me to put up with more than I'm probably willing to, willing to put up with, but um, that ended a while ago because <laughs> I'm over these people. So, um, yeah, so what was I saying? Hmm, I forgot. Oh, I was going to get to God. <laughs> Excuse my potty mouth as I bring the father into this. But no, so I was super excited about, um, I was super, super excited about the prospect of teaching English to 10th graders, right? Um, and getting into writing and writing projects and all this other stuff. And just sharing this love of writing that I have with people, with young people. So that was super exciting to me. And as the week like the first week rolled into the second week, I was like, oh, okay, um, Father, this isn't what we talked about. Like, uh, hello, like we, we discussed something else, right? Because I'm not feeling, <laughs> I'm not feeling this, this, this thing you put me into here. You know, this was supposed to be alignment, right? And so uh, that conversation became, okay, okay, I hear you. I, I hear you. Blessings. I know how your blessings work. They are not always sugar and cream. <laughs> Every blessing I've ever received has been a struggle in some sense. It has not been pretty. It's been hard. It's been difficult. Um, and it wasn't seen as a blessing until I came out of it on the other end. So I've had to have that process in my mind about, okay, is this truly a blessing? Is this truly a process that's going to bless me, right? If I struggle with these personalities, these attitudes, and all this other stuff. And then I go through that because there was a time where everything was expected to be a struggle and I toughed it out like a soldier every single time, just as stressed as I want it to be. And I got through that thinking and then I got to the point where I was like, yeah, but I'm not there anymore. That's not where he has me anymore. I am not, I am, he, <laughs> like literally I am aware of my free will, 
within the situations he puts me into. I'm aware that the blessing is going to come whether or not I struggle or not. <laughs> whether or not I put up with someone's uh, attitudes and mistreatment with me or not, the blessings are going to come. Um, the, the weight of the blessing might be different. The timing of the blessing might be different. But whatever is in store for me, it's going to be mine. I absolutely know that with everything that, that um, I live and breathe. I know that, right? And so I know that I don't have to put up with the things that make me uncomfortable. And that's how I move. That's how I walk. And so when these people are letting their, basically their racism come through, their sexism come through, and they don't identify it, they don't understand it as that, that's how I see it. That's how I understand it. That's how I'm experiencing it, right? Because I am who I am. And I know how people perceive me. And their treatment is so disrespectful. I can't imagine that they think that... Um, a white woman or a white man would put up with it. I can't imagine. I can't imagine that they would talk to a white woman or a white man the way that they're talking to me within my fourth week, right? The way that they're dismissing me with all of my credentials <laughs> within the first four weeks. I can't imagine it, right? So, um, yeah. Um, when you know who you are, you know what you want, and you know why you're doing what you're doing, people are not able to manipulate you and have you on the run the way that they want to. And I think that that's important for everybody to know. So uh, that's my share for the day. Know your why. Whatever your why is, be true to it. And um, know that you don't have to put up with the most degrading of treatment and disrespect just to get to your why. There's always another way. There's always another way. And um, I've been blessed by, by getting around life in a lot of various ways. And I'm going to continue to do it how I do it. Be blessed. God be the glory.